Hello everybody and welcome to episode 18 of The Wild Robot. Today we have some guest listeners with me. This is Mercedes, my goddaughter, and this is Natalie, my other niece, okay? So, they're going to listen with us and they might go run and play whatever they're feeling like it, but they know that they're going to be quiet during the reading. So, chapter 67, The Sunrise. By dawn, the bonfire had dwindled to a smoldering hill, hill of ash. Everyone else had gone home, and only Roz and Brightbill remained in the meadow. They lay in the grass together, watching as the soft light of morning crept up from the horizon. And then Roz said, let's go for a walk. The robot and the goose hiked and flew up to their favorite spot on the grassy ridge, but then they kept going. They followed the ridge to the mountain and climbed all the way up to the craggy peak just in time to see the sunrise. I climbed up here once before, said Roz, as the sun's first rays warmed her body. I sat on this very rock, looked out at the island, and thought I would always be alone, but I was wrong. Are you happy, Mom? The robot thought for a moment. I am. I'm happy too, Bright Bill closed his eyes and felt the wind and, and the sun. There was a slight chill in the air that made him feel alive. Everything seemed just right, and then he heard a distant buzzing sound. The goose squinted to the south and saw a familiar shape in the sky. He turned to his mother and said, Ma, there's an airship flying this way. Chapter 68, The Recos. The airship approached from the south, like some giant migratory bird. The ship was a sleek, white triangle with a single dark window facing forward. Three identical robots stared out the window. The robots resembled Ross, but they were bigger and bulkier and shinier. The word Reco was lightly etched into each side of their torsos, followed by their individual unit number. They were Reco 1, Reco 2, and Reco 3. You can see too. The Recos flew in a low circle around the island. They saw a smoking hill of ash. They saw mysterious wooden domes. They saw four dead robots scattered across the shore. The airship hovered above the robot gravesite for a moment. Then it floated up over the island and lowered itself into a small meadow at the foot of the mountain. The engines blasted air toward the ground, bending trees and tearing grass. Then the landing gear sank into the soil. The engines powdered down and all was quiet. A door hummed open and out stepped the Recos. They took several long strides into the meadow and stopped. A shadowy figure was lurking at the for forest edge. The Recos turned and faced it. They stood flushed together like a sparkling wall, and then the shadowy figure began to move. Out from the trees walked some sort of two-legged creature. It was dusty and dirty. Butterflies flitted around the flowers that sprouted from its body. One of its feet was made of wood, and the creature spoke. Hello, my name is Roz. Chapter 69, The Defective Robot. Hello, Rosam Unit 7134. We are the Recos. We are here to retrieve all Rosam units. The cold, flat voice came from Reco 1. He and his partner stood absolutely still and kept their glowing eyes locked on their target. There are four others, said Roz, but they are dead. We have already located the remains of the other units, and Re said Reco 1. We will collect them later. Now, come with us. The three Recos motioned Roz to the airship, but she didn't move. Where have you come from, she said. The Recos turned and stared at Roz. Do not ask questions, said Reco 1. Well, where will you take me? Do not ask questions. Why must I leave? Do not ask questions. I will not go anywhere until I get some answers. There was a brief silence at Reco 1 as Reco 1 computed his next move. And then he began to speak. One year ago, a cargo ship carrying 500 Rosam units was sunk by a hurricane. 495 units 
have been retrieved from the ocean floor. We have come here in search of the last five, and we have located them. Rosam Unit 7134, you are the property of Tech Lab Industries. We will return you to the factory, where the makers will refurbish you and sell you to a work site. You will then live on that work site indefinitely. Now come with us. But I live here, said Roz. That is incorrect. Rosam Unit 7134, any further resistance will be proof of defectiveness and we will deactivate you. But Roz had more questions. Who are the makers? What is my purpose? And why can I not ask questions? This unit is defective, said Reco Wan to his partners. Commence deactivation. In perfect unison, Reco stepped toward Roz. They raised their blocky hands, ready to restrain their target and ready to shut her down with the press of a button. But a loud squawk and a streak of feathers cut them off. Stay away from my mama! Bright Bill swooped into the meadow and started hopping around, ready to defend his mother. The Reco stopped and looked down at the goose. Of course they didn't understand his words. They heard only meaningless squawks. And then they heard their target squawking back to him. Bright Bill, get out of here, said Roz in the language of, of the animals. These robots are dangerous. What do they want? They want to take me away. The Reco stared at their target, trying to understand. Why was she exchanging noises with the goose? And then new noises began rising up. Rustlings and shrieks echoed from the forest. Animals were gathering. Their wild voices called out to one another. Roz needs our help. Those robots want to take her away. We have to do something. The uproar in the forest grew louder and louder. The Reckos peered past Roz toward the mysterious noises, but saw only foliage. Suddenly, shadows swept across the meadow and Brightbill's flock dove into the Reckos. The geese fur furiously flapped and pecked and wrapped their wings around the robots' faces. Clinging to the Reckos like feathery masks, distracting them, blinding them, Brightbill turned to his mother. Run! Chapter 70. The hunt begins. While his flock distracted the Reckos, Brightbill started around. Brightbill darted around behind them and desperately shouted, search for buttons. He had once shut down his mother with a click, and now he would do the same thing to the intruders. But he found no buttons on, their ro on these robots, only smooth surfaces. Clearly, the Rakos were not designed to be shut down so easily. Giant hands swung through the air, and geese were swatted away. Loudwing was plucked by her foot and flung to the ground. She crawled into the weeds, and as the others scrambled up over the trees, and others scrambled up over the trees, a quick scan by the robots revealed that Roz was gone. The three Reckos turned and marched back to the airship. The door hummed open and robots disappeared inside. And when they stepped back into the meadow, each was holding a, a, silver, rif a silver rifle in his hands. The hunt for Roz was on. Without speaking, the Reckos marched away from one another, fanning out their standard search pattern. Reco 1 marched straight toward the southern tip of the island, Reco 2 marched straight up the mountainside, and Reco 3 marched straight into the forest. All right, that's all for today. I wonder what's going to happen next. See you later. You want to say bye? Bye. Come bye. and see.